Hey, how's it going there folks? This is Hellbent and welcome to Auto Hotkey GUI Mini Tutorial number 28. Uh, this one is based on a question that I received recently by this uh, Dylan Cara and they ask, is it possible to create a edit box with text in it that prompts a user to do to enter some kind of value and it disappears as they add that value? the kind of way that you see on, on lights, online sites, etc, etc. So I thought, I, I've thought about this a couple uh, months ago, um, about actually adding this kind of thing into it, but I decided it was too much work. Um, but it is an interesting thing. Um, by default, as far as I'm aware and from what I could find, it's not a def it's not something that you can uh, natively program into it like there's no command that says um, to do this sort of thing so what you would have to do is actually create it yourself you'd have to script it out yourself and uh, that's what we're going to be looking at in this tutorial um, this is going to be the first tutorial where I'm going to be testing out a new tool that I just created to help me with uh, creating tutorials in a more timely manner and to be able to cover more difficult topics faster. So if so if you uh, notice that I start, if I'm uh, going to be typing a lot faster than I normally do, it's because I'm going to be using this tool right here, which helps me, is going to, hopefully it's going to help me uh, speed through things a little bit uh, faster and to be able to cover more complex topics um, because I won't have to remember as much. But uh, I'm not trying to hide it from you. All right. Um, but I am going to be typing a little bit faster because I am using this. So I've uh, already gone through and created my lesson plan and then uh, programmed it into this. And now I'm just going to use it to hopefully help me get through it. But like I said, this is the, the first time I'm going to be using it. So I'm sure there's going to be some uh, little bugs here and there. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, let me know what you think afterwards uh, in the comments. Uh, if you think it's a good tool, if you make if it uh, makes it faster, etc. But anyways, let's just jump into it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to set up the script with a few commands. Mm. Okay, so we're going to do single instance force. And then down at the bottom of the script, I'm going to add in a hotkey to exit. As you know, I always add in hotkeys just as an emergency exit. All right, the next thing, because we're going to be doing some things with checking the clicks, uh, when a user clicks their mouse button, we're going to need to check for those messages. So we're going to, we're going to use on message, and we're going to be looking for the message 201, which is the left mouse button down. I've named... I could have named it uh, the function that I'm going to be using, whatever they had it as. It's like WBL button down or something like that. But I prefer to name these my my own way now. So, so I'm going to create a function called uh, check control. And whenever the user, when the script's running, whenever the user clicks down on their left mouse button, it's going to execute this function. So I'll come down here and I'll put that in. So I can see that my indentation. When I was testing this program, I mostly did my test in Notepad and it doesn't have the same kind of indentation things. Anyways, uh, the next thing is let, let's create a GUI. So I'm just going to put in the options so it's always going to stay on top and I'm going to set its color to the background is going to be almost black and the edit boxes are going to be completely black. Uh, next, I'm just going to show the GUI, and I've already written this out, so obviously I know what its size is going to be, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we're going to have a nice, it's just going to be a little small GUI that sits on the screen. And then we're going to add in a couple of uh, our labels. Uh, the first one is when we hit the exit button, or the X at the top, it's going to do GUI close, exit app. Next, I'm going to create a generic uh, submit all uh, subroutine, and this is basically uh, any any control that I have that all I really want to do when I interact with it, all I really want it to do is just update the value of the variables. So I'll often create a subroutine called submit all, and then just have it basically submit values into the variables. So here we go. 
once again indentations a little bit off uh, submit all just submit anything into the variables that are associated with that okay um, next I'm gonna create a, another subroutine that's gonna when I press a button later on it's gonna reload the script so if you're doing testing over and over again you can just hit the button to reload the script okay with that out of the way what we're gonna do is because most of our focus isn't on creating a massively large GUI with tons of different controls on it. We're mostly just going to be focusing on what we want to be able to do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set a, a font and a font color that is separate from what I really want it to be in the in the long run. So this is going to be like you know how those edit boxes they'll have like usually it's it's a it's a grayish color. Um, almost it's it's somewhat close to the same color as the edit box background itself you know it doesn't it doesn't pop out so I'm gonna create a I'm gonna set the font to a gray color I'm gonna have it underlined and I'm gonna set it to be in Cooper black but you can just set this to whatever you want what I suggest though is that you use something that's different from everything else that you're gonna be using the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple of variables and these variables what they're going to do is they're going to hold that message that we want the edit box to have in it when you start all right so I'm going to create a variable called temp last name edit and later on I'm going to name the edit boxes themselves uh, everything except for this temp part so I'm going to get rid of the temp and then the edit boxes themselves I'm going to name this so I have this temporary variable that's going to hold this temporary value and this is what's going to be the prompt that sits inside of the edit box. So I'm going to be doing two edit boxes. So let me create another variable. So this one, I'm going to have two edit box, one for the last name of a person and the other one's going to be for the first name. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and add in our edit boxes. So let me give a little bit of space to keep it uh, so you can see everything. Um, so I'm just going to create an edit box and I'm going to position it within my GUI. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to associate a variable. Now associating a variable with this is going to be important because later on we're going to be looking at what kind of thing is sending our events in our click. So whenever the person, whenever the person triggers our check control function, we're going to be checking the name of the variables. And if they match, we're going to do certain things. So let's associate a variable, and this is going to be our variable for our last name edit box. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have it every time we interact with this, we're going to trigger our submit all fun our submit all subroutine. And then the last thing I'm going to have it do is I'm going to have it display this uh, temporary variable up here, the contents of that. Okay, so that's our first edit box out of the way. Now let's do that again with the next one. So I'm going to create my edit, position it on my GUI. I'm going to associate a variable with it. And then I'm going to attach it to my submit all label again. And then once again, I'm going to display the contents of that variable up there. Now that I'm done with this, and like I said, this font here is only going to be for this control here. All the rest of my controls, I'm probably going to want to use some other kind of font. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reset the font, and then I'm going to change it to something else. And now I need a button, so that way, if I want to test this over and over again, I might want to have a way of quickly reloading this. So I'm going to add a button that's going to do that for me. So here's a button. I positioned it, given it a size and a width, and I'm just going to attach this to my reload subroutine. And then I'm going to put some text on it that just says reload. The last thing I'm going to do is for our testing purposes, I want to be able to see what's going on with these guys here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another edit box that has two rows that's going to display whatever value our two edit boxes here have. So the first row is going to actually, you know what? I remember I reversed the order because I don't like the first name and last name. It gets confusing. So I'm going to have the first name first, I believe, and then the last name 
uh, last. <clears throat> but anyways, I'm going to create an edit box that has two rows, and it's just basically going to show me whatever these guys get updated to. So there's my edit box, and there it's positioned. I'm going to set this to read only because we don't need to actually interact with it. And I'm going to associate a variable with it so that way we can update it. But because I'm not going to be interacting with it, I don't need to attach this to any labels. Instead, all I'm going to do is have it display whatever contents are currently in the first name variable and the last name edit variable. Okay, so actually I guess it is last name first and then first name. Okay, I thought I, re I, thought I reversed them in there, but no. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that way I don't want these guys here to have focus right away. It's not going to cause any problems, but it's a little bit easier if I just say, you know what, when I run the program, I don't want these guys up here to have focus. So what I, instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that when I run the program, this edit box here gets the focus. So I, all I did was just GUI control and then focus was the subcommand and then what the control is our display edit, which is this guy right here. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that way each time we type into our two edit boxes up here that we're going to be doing the testing on, I'm going to have that when it comes into the submit all, as soon as it submits it, I'm going to update the, this this edit box here with those two values. So I'm going to come down in here into the submit all, drop down a line, and do GUI control, which GUI I'm going to be working with, which variable I'm going to be, which control I'm going to be working with, which is this one right here, and then what am I going to be updating into it. And it's going to be the new value for each of those variables. Okay, so that is that. We, I think we have enough now to actually do a test to see what it looks like. So here we go. This is our GUI. This is our text that later on what we want is that when we interact with this, we want that to disappear for us to be able to put in our own text. So this is kind of the prompt for the user to say, okay, this is the kind of information that you're going to put in that field. And like I said, as soon as I load the script, I have it set so that way, instead of it having this one having focus right away, I've made it so that way this one has focus. And I believe if, we, if I start typing in here now, we should see this get updated. Okay, I did reverse. I'm going to have to change that because right now, oh, whatever, whatever. It's, it's the first name is first. It doesn't matter. The first name is first. I, I did eventually, I, I thought I did change them the order, but I forgot. Okay, so anyways, don't be confused about that. You can change them around up here if you want, if you're confused. So just swap this one with this one, because that's how it is down here. So the first name is Hell, last name is Bent. Okay, so there's our GUI. Now let's go into a few of the other things that we need. Um, because the user might actually be navigating through this script or through this GUI using the tab key, right? They might be switching through controls. What we need to do is we need to anticipate that. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a hotkey for the tab key, but we're going to leave it so that way if the person presses tab, it's still going to do what it normally does, but we're going to have it do something else as well. Now, ideally, when you write this out yourself, what you're going to do is perhaps use some context-sensitive hotkeys, or maybe inside of the hotkey you can check to make sure that this is actually the active window, because in other words, it doesn't need to be doing all the testing, right? But to keep it simple here and to keep the code down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore the fact that we might actually be on a window like this or some other window because ideally all we really want is to be checking on our GUI. So just bear that in mind. I'm not going to be adding that in, but you probably should. So I'm just going to do the title key plus tab, which means 
tab can do what it normally does without any problem. Now from testing earlier on I noticed that if I don't add a little tiny bit of a delay in here it's actually going to be one behind. So let's say if I'm up here and if I press tab as soon as it does the, the things that we're going to have it do later on it would actually still be reporting that it was in this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a little tiny bit of a delay so that it can catch up before I grab any information. So I'm just going to sleep for 50 milliseconds. And you might want to play around with this, see if, if, it's, if you have any issues with that. Maybe you might want to change it to, you know, 100 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds, maybe 500 milliseconds, whatever you need it to be. Probably don't go too, fu too high because if they're, if they're switching through it really quickly, um, you might have some problems. So just a little bit of a delay, and then that's it and then I'll add in a return. Okay, um, let's see. Let's go ahead and make some, make sure that we can actually do what we want it to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check to see if when we click in these guys, does it actually get the information that we want. So what I'm going to do down here is each time now once again, this ideally would be inside of a condition where you're checking to see if this is the active window or not, but we're not going to be doing that here, but you should. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable, I'm going to call it temp, and I'm going to store in it whatever value it gets for the control that I'm currently in. So I'm going to say temp. Uh, temp equals a GUI control. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if the value of temp matches up with one of the, our edit controls. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the variables that I'm using for the edit boxes up here and I'm going to use them as, as literal strings because this is what our, our GUI controller is going to give us back. It's going to give us back the name of the variable so in the condition I need to make sure that I'm using it as a string. So I'm going to check if this variable equals a string. So if the temp variable equals our last name edit we're just going to pop up a tooltip that says that we got it's the last name. Next we're going to check if if it's not that perhaps it's the first name. So we're going to check else if the value that we're now we now have in temp if it equals our first name variable. If it does we're going to display a tooltip that says it's the first name and then after that we're going to have else and just turn off the tooltip. Oh, that's bad indentation. So if I if I click in this one, I want it to say that I'm in the last name edit box. If I click on this one, I want it to say that I'm in the first name edit box. And if I click anywhere else, I want to turn off the tooltip. Now, before we run a test of that, what I'm going to do is I Actually, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and run this. So, so right now, if I click on this edit box, we should get it saying last name. So we can see that that's working. It's grabbing that information, and we're able to do something with that. If I click on this one, it should say first name. And then if I click on this one, we should get rid of that tooltip. Perfect. Everything's working fine. Now we have to do... a most of the stuff is going to be the same, but we need to do it in a slightly different way up here in our tab. So now, if the person tabs through, we need to grab some other information. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the focus of whatever control we currently are in if we press tab. And this isn't, this isn't exclusive to auto hotkey GUIs. This is anything. So this is another reason why you might want to have this as a context sensitive uh, hotkey where it's only going to work if you're in this window. Because this is going to be getting the information of any control. So if, 
by chance, if you happen to go to some other site or some other interface where they actually have something that has the same name, chances are very slim that they're not gonna they're gonna have that. But you know, maybe they will. So it's better just to keep this context sensitive. But anyways, we're gonna get the as soon as we press tab, we're gonna wait a little bit, and then we're gonna get the um, the name of the control or the ID of the control of our active window. So if this is our active window, if we press tab, whatever control we end up in, it's going to store that into our temp2 variable. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to change that because it's not going to be this, it's going to be here, I believe it's going to be edit box one that we'll get. Here it'll be edit box two. This will be button one, and this would be edit box three. But we don't want to get that information. We want to get whatever we named those variables. So we're going to convert that into actually getting the name. So we're going to take whatever we got from that, and we're going to use GUI control get to get the name that we named that variable. And we're going to store that into a new temporary variable. And then we're just going to go through the same thing that we did down here where we do our test to see if our temp3 variable equals last name edit and else if, if it equals the other one. So if temp3 equals last name edit, put up a tooltip uh, tool that says last name, etc. etc. Okay, so we have enough to do our next test. So this time we're going to be testing if we tab through, are we getting the proper information? So I'm just going to press tab, and it should jump up to this one the first time. So we can see that it's grabbed the last name info. So we are getting a match. We're getting first name, and then if I press it again, we should get nothing. Okay, so we can see that everything is working as we expect. So now what I'm going to do is, because we're going to be swapping between, um, we might not want, what we might want to happen is that if they, if they click in here, but then for whatever reason they decide not to actually fill it in, like we're going to get this to disappear, but let's say that they don't end up filling anything in there, what we're going to do is we're going to create a control variable so that way if the the value of that edit ends up being a blank value we'll just put this text right back in there again so I'm going to create two variables that I'm going to use as control variables and we're going to use those to, as a second condition that we're going to test and that'll become more clear as we type it out but I'm going to come up here and I'm going to create a variable called unchanged last so if the last name is unchanged, it'll have a value of 1, and I'm going to do unchanged first. So these are the starting values, and later on we're going to have add those into here. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all of these if conditions, because we're done with those. We're going to re be replacing them with new, new stuff. So we'll work on tab first. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check to see if, just like before, if when we tab to it is the name that we're getting, the name of what that we're looking for, but we're also going to check to make sure that our, ver our control variable unchanged last, we're going to check to make sure that it still has a value of 1. Okay, so if these two conditions are true, then what we're going to do is we are going to erase the text that we have in here. So GUI control, we're going to influence uh, this control, and we're going to say put no text into it. So we're going to clear it out. The next thing we're going to do is, because we're going to be typing in our what we really want to be typing in there, we need to change the font. So we're going to reset whatever font we had before. We're going to first thing we're going to do is we're going to clear that out. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to change it. So in this case, I'm just going to make it change it to aqua, but I'm going to leave all the default settings. So I don't, I don't remember what the default uh, font type is and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But there's a default uh, font. It's not this one here. 
It looks more like this. But anyways, we're going to change it to that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to update that control with that font. So by using GUI control font. So GUI control, which GUI am I working on? And then the subcommand is font. And which control am I working with? And I'm working with this one up here. The last thing I'm going to do is because these two conditions were true, I'm going to change our control variable to a new value so it can't come back into here anymore. So now, the next time it loop, next time I click on that, it can't come back into this, even though it's going to be the correct edit box, but because the value of our unchanged is now zero, it's not going to be true, so it's not going to change that. And then I just need to close this off. Okay. Unlike before, what I'm going to do, instead of jumping right to the, the next edit box, instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an if else with this one, and then the other one is going to have its own separate if or if else statements. So we're still going to be working with our first edit box. And this time what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be checking to see if our control variable equals zero. So the next time, after we've changed this, the next time we click on it, if that value now equals zero, and if the value, if there's nothing in here, like if it's completely blank, then what we're going to do is we're going to replace it back to being like it was before with, with our, our prompt text. So if this isn't true, then we're going to check this one. If the value of unchanged last, which is our control variable, equals zero, and the value that's stored in this edit is null, or if it's blank, if there's no text in there, then what we're going to do is, once again, we're going to first change the font to our the font that we're going to be using for, that we used up here to display. So we're going to be using this same font here. or whatever font you want to use. And then I am going to update that font for that control. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put back into this edit box the value that I have up here, just like we had it at the beginning. And then I'm going to reset our control variable back to 1 again, so that way the next time we click on it, we can do the same thing over again. Okay. Next, we're going to do the same. We're going to duplicate this for the second edit. And I'm going to go through this a little bit quicker, but it's the exact same thing, except we're going to... And I appears I'm just looking at it now, but it appears that I'm not talk it's not this we're not actually working when we click on it. We're, this is when we tab to it. We're gonna do click to it next. So once again, if it's true, change uh, clear out that edit box, change the font, update the font, and change our control variable. Else if if the control variable now equals zero and the, the edit box is still blank, reset everything back to the way it was when it was at the beginning. So change the font and update it back to having the value of our temp first edit. Oh, bad indentation. We're going to, once again, reset our control variable back to 1, so that way that this can be true again. And that is, that's it for that. So we have enough here to actually do a test of that. So this is if we press tab now. So if I tab to that first control, it should clear that out. So we can see that it's completely empty now. And if I type something in, it should be in a different color. OK, perfect. Everything's working exactly as expected. But what if they didn't add something here? So I'm going to erase this. And the next time I tab to that, 
it refills it back with our, our prompt text. If I tab back to it again, it'll clear it out. I can type in it. And if I come back to it this time, it just stays. Okay, so that's that. Now we can do the same thing that we did up there, but with our other variable sets down in here. And once again, because we've just gone through this whole process of talking about everything that's going on, I can go through this really quickly. So the first thing we're going to do in here is we're going to check to see if the if our temp variable equals the control we're looking for and if our unchanged last equals 1. If it does, we're going to clear out the edit box. Then we're going to change the font. We're going to update the font. And we're going to update our control variable. And then exit out of that. Else, if, if, this, if this isn't true, then check this. Does unchanged last equal 0? If it does, and if it's null, if it does, change the font. Update the font. I mean, change the font. Up Now update the font. Uh, and put back into our text that says, enter your first name. And then reset the value of our control variable back to 1, so that way the next time it goes through, it can be true. And then we just have to do that for our second edit. If the first name and blah, 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 change the font, update the font, and change our control variable. Else if, change the font, and put our text back in there, and change our control variable. And that's it. That is our entire script. So let's have a run. And now, if I click here, it gets rid of the text. If I click here, it gets rid of the text. And that's it. If I tab to them, it gets rid of the text. I can type something in. I can tab to the next one, type something in. And if I tab through them again, it just stays the same. If for whatever reason, if they decide to delete it, as soon as they move away, it fills it back with our prompt text. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I think that covers everything. If you have any questions any about what we talked about, uh, let me know. Or if you have any topics that you'd like to see covered in a future tutorial, uh, just leave me a comment down below. Anyways, have a good evening, and see you on the next one.